Pittsburgh. For some of you, you just thought, I totally forgot Pittsburgh existed. And that was the case for me as well. But Pittsburgh does in fact exist and they are incredibly well known for many things. Uh, too many to even really mention here. But the question is, are they known for their guns? Today, we are gonna find out as we hunt for the Gucciest guns in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Who knew? Pittsburgh. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. I forgot Pittsburgh was a town. Damn it, I don't need to see this because this is on like my short list right now. This is how I get into trouble. Sir, could you show me that thug gun? I'm gonna hit you with a no ball. In the history of this web series, hunt for Gucci guns. Never has there been a time where a host or anyone involved purchased a gun. Well, my friends, that all changes today in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, write it up. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy, buy your well, Unfortunately, today has taken a turn, my friends, and for the first time in the history of the hunt for Gucci guns, I just bought a gun. And you guys are gonna have to stick around to find out what it is, because it's dirty and it's awesome. Okay, first shop is uh, Allegheny Arms. It's in the Pittsburgh area, obviously. Um, so, very new shop, rummage around, see what we can find. It sounds like some good stuff. Right. Uh, I have no idea what part of Pittsburgh we're in. We're in the, the, the part where it's very hot right now and where they made steel in the past. That's about all I know about Pittsburgh. Is that what they made here? Yeah, yeah, the home of, the headquarters of US Steel. Big uh, big effort in the, in the war effort in World War II, so a lot of steel manufacturing here. Sounds very boring. Okay, so we're here at Allegheny Arms uh, around the Pittsburgh area. And I think you guys are gonna like some of the stuff here. We saw everything from things that go to things that are very quiet suppressed as we will demonstrate a little bit later in the video to historically interesting things. It's pretty cool. Let's check it out. They, they have some 1911s for sure. Well, did, what, you, did you see the used case over there yet? No. Did you peruse it? Did no. you browse through? Not Did you yet. see anything? I should probably do that. All right, let's go take a look at the used case. I mean, because like I said, I'm getting old, so now I kind of want it. If it's if it's over 100 years old, I'm interested. If it's not, I'm not quite there. Eli, there's a auto ordinance uh, 1911. Yeah, I don't know if that is uh, something that would necessarily be on the hunt for Gucci guns. No, as they, uh, you know, they are not very. It's a joke. It's not very Gucci. That's your Bursa right there. Um, is it the same model I got? No, it's a Thunder Plus. I don't have the Thunder Plus. I can't believe you got a 40. My first, the first gun I ever purchased uh, personally was a handgun, was a Springfield XD subcompact in 40 Smith & Wesson. And it's I, a little embarrassing. It's embarrassing, but at this point I have to own up to it. You do. And just say this, is, this is where I started. And uh, started from the bottom, now we're here. Which, uh, the SE, yep. Yeah, that's a pretty cool gun right there. So the Colt SE model uses the uh, pre-war uh, uh, markings. They actually started those markings in late 1917. They would use them about to 1924. You'd see a resurgence of them around World War II. But this is a pretty cool gun because it offers you a lot of things that you may need if you're wanting to build a base gun Colt. So first of all, it's got those gangster markings, all right? It's factory milled already for the no, uh, Novak site, so you won't have to have your gunsmith do that. It's got a high undercut actually on the trigger guard, believe it or not. That's not a bad one to get, in my opinion. Yeah. You don't have a custom Colt. That's like a hallmark of a 1911 guy. I used to, actually. You need, uh, you need a custom Colt. Yeah, yeah, I used to. The German side of the case over here. Well, we're not really, we're not, we're not even going there. We're not even going some good stuff. German. Well, I'm here for some good German stuff as well. Pretty standard P30 SKs, P30, P30L. And I like Mark 23, then, I like Mark 23, the, come on. Mark 23's in there. That's I like solid. how the Germans and the Italians are in the same case. Well, yeah, it's a little, it's a little Axis Powers action over it's here. It's a tad bit ironic. That's, yeah, that's a little bit. <laughs> but a USP Elite 45, that's actually pretty badass. You don't really see those every day. But the Mark 23, hey, that's a hell of a find. That's a cartoon pistol. Yeah, I love it. I know you do. I love it. I'll tell you I what I see. Look at that right there. FAL with the uh, paratrooper folding Ooh, stock. That's yeah, a sweet gun. Go that's that. a it's sweet gun. a DS, I'm assuming. Now, it, oh, it's definitely a DS arm. Because as much as I like American firearms, the FAL is... you got to have an FAL. You, you really do. You really do. That, 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 that's a cool pickup. That's a sweet gun. That's definitely a cool pickup there. Germans. How about that Mini 14? I got one with of them. With the folder. Did they send you a blued one or a stainless one? Uh, mine's blued. 
Yeah. Oh man. I love the. I've got a blued and a stainless. But the cool thing about this gun, and why I really like what they did. So this, I think stainless Mini 14s look fantastic, but this is actually the reintroduction in the first. Um, this is the first time Ruger has ever offered the GB or government barrel to civilians in the civilian market. Yeah. You could get them used, but this this actually has a bayonet lug. Ooh, LRP package on that oh, yeah. uh, HK. That's selling. We got okay. some break open shotguns, but we've been a little spoiled. Uh, very. <laughs> we've been a little spoiled <laughs> the past few days on break open <laughs> shotguns. Yeah. Yeah, that video is coming uh, in like a week, so yeah. look forward to that. Just trust me, look look forward to that video. Auto ordnance recreations of the uh, M1 carbines. Kind of cool. I don't know if they're any good or not, but to be honest. But at that price, but... I'd just find me an original M1 carbine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm curious to know if there's some cool stuff lingering in the back. Yeah. Which is what I'm about to find out. So my question is, we've yeah. kind of rummaged around, are there any fun things, perhaps not on the floor? Yeah, can, we can have we, a lot of good stuff. Can we look at some of those? Absolutely. Because go this is the hunt for Gucci guns. It is. We have to go over guns in the shop. Okay. That's where we keep all the really cool stuff. Okay. Okay, right. okay so it's yeah, like a whole... Yeah, come in and then uh, snag the door when you come in if you don't mind. So... It's like a whole secret lair over here. Um, we can look at the cage real quick. Sure. Um, the cage is actually where we keep all of... Kind of a combination of our gunsmithing stuff as well as some of my personal stuff and we have all of this stuff that's pending for gun broker okay so everything oh on... you got the s pass 12. damn it oh yeah this that's on gun broker right now uh, yeah we actually just high did... on my hit list man yeah we just did a full jurassic park vibes yeah we got this out of an estate probably six or eight months ago pulled it apart did a full basic restoration on it, all Damn. new rubber, all new everything. Mm, that so. is gorgeous, man. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta come in there. I gotta check you, that you out. Play? Well, that's that's on my list of like kind of like grail guns. Um, I can't remember how to use this thing because it, it'll go auto or pump. Yeah, um, but I've never, I, but I've never um, messed with them. They're just so ridiculously beefy. Yeah, with that with that Velociraptor stock. Come yeah. on, man. You, you're holding it. You have to say the line. <laughs> Is it clever, clever girl, clever girl, clever girl. Clever girl. Yeah. and then he just gets smoked? Yep, not so clever girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not so clever girl. It's gonna be some combination push of buttons the, here. Push that bolt yeah. release at the same time. And now we see why he's never okay. sold. <laughs> this okay. is this is why the Velociraptor. Yeah, like the Velociraptor had so much time to kill him. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're doing oh we man! Did a restoration on this trench gun. That's badass. Yeah, that's an 1897. Yeah, that's an original trench gun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's an original 1897. Um, yeah, we just did a restoration on this one because it was beat. Wow, yeah, that's clean. Oh, it's 00992 or 99Z? Z? That's serial number 99 of the 92 S's. Holy shit. Oh, show. wow. Number 66 is in a box behind you. We're restoring that one right now. Whoa. Well, I saw something, cool. you know, per the cult of Browning. Hold on. 1903? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Boy. Oh, we're talking Model M's now. That's something that's I like. Speed. That's like that's what I like to take home. I got five of these. You guys like older stuff too. I I, I see that, and I need to see that. I need to see that oh. right now. Oh. So I need to see that. I just right had a now. friend of mine at Custom Cylindrical uh, build that. That is a basically a straight pull bolt action. He's working on a semi-auto version. But that's an integral 30 carbine that's modeled after one of the uh, SOE guns that the Brits did. Wow. They only did a handful of them during the war. Yes. That is sick. Man. Colt Very single cool. action army over here. Yeah, you can grab it. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a 1956 production single action army in 38 special. So second generation. Yeah, that's a first year second generation. That's epic. Yeah, Colt re-released these guns after the cowboy craze. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a 1957. Okay. I have a 56. You have a 56. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is a proper, proper gun right there. Yeah, I think Ruger brought out the Blackhawk in '56, and then Colt was like, "Oh, wait, there's a market for these." And then the following year, they brought right. out the they brought the single action army in the more modern calibers and uh, more properly heat treated guns than yeah. the first generations. Exactly. This is a good. I mean, honestly, that's a great shooting gun. Oh, and these fantastic. are these are great to to use and shoot. I guess we'll start on the top. Sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. Talk to yep. me. Talk so, to me. This is a uh, post-sample MP5K. Oh, mm. yeah. Um, That's got 
proper. Yep, yep, yep. That, yeah. that's, that's the ticket right there with that 20 rounder. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, that's a post EMP 5K. That's so nasty. I'm not gonna lie, that's my jam that, right there. this gun right here is one of the only times I think communism is, you know. That's in my grail gun list right there. Yeah, that's a sweet gun. Yeah. This is a- um, mm, With the man. This is a virgin so. Tula crank kit that I got when they first came out. Like probably, I actually bought this kit while I was in Iraq. <laughs> when they came out online, I was like, bye. Oh my gosh. So, oh hell yeah, nice. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got the good. It's a UMP good conversion, USC UMP conversion. Uh, I actually so that this, started as a USC. Yeah, this okay. was actually a gray USC. Okay, really? This was one of the original 2000. Yeah, this is 2000 production gray USC that I converted. This is actually on a Form One from years ago, um, but I converted this to 40 because <laughs> I had tons of 40 ammo. People would trade in 40s over the past few yep. years and give you ammo because they didn't want any more. Right. So I ended up having a pile of 40 cal ammo just sitting here that nobody wanted. So, well, I started burning it. Is that a Galil SAR? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we're, you we're, can getting have there. This thing. <laughs> we're getting there. Heap saying we're getting there. We're, I, we're I don't know there. if we're ever gonna get there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a sweet piece there. Hell yeah. yeah. That's a sweet piece there. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a proper rifle. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a proper rifle. AK a Galil just your heart does out. it for me, man. It is so sexy. But they're still pretty damn cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a killer gun right there. You got a Mark 12, there uh, you the go. original Knight's Rail. So I built this one back when this stuff was still relatively affordable. <laughs> um, I've turned down two grand for this rail. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm Ooh. like, well, yeah. I, well, well, it's like, why? I don't know if yeah. you really want to play with that one or not. But this here is actually really kind of a neat gun. Uh, this? Yes, it is. Look, Jake. Oh, oh we, we were just talking about this. We were just talking right about this. There it is. That's a, uh, that's a vector. I bought that probably 20 years ago. Yeah. There he, he, there he's, These he's are happy. the things that make me happy in life. He's happy. Damn, with that short barrel and everything. You ever come across a mini? Let me mini know. Mini Uzi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Because I, I, a mini and a micro is really what I uh, desire. I'll get a full size, but that's least of my priorities. Minis are real tough to find. I can't even find a damn mini right yeah. now. Yeah, and they're not same. cheap. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, micros are going for like four or five Gs right now. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. okay. I'm ready to be there. Okay. This is an original yes, 1943. It is. Uh, yes, it is. High standard HDMS. Mm -hmm. This is one of the original OSS guns. Whew. Whew. Um, this is the original baffle stack. Everything on here is basically. Original. Oh my God, that's sick. Wow. Um. It's got the uh, U.S. property mark on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This actually, this serial falls directly in the middle of the, I think, 43 deliveries to OSS. Smoking Nazis silently. Yes, sir. Uh, and if you look at it on the top. I don't know much about this. this is, that this little is a new dark one, marks, mm -hmm. that's actually blood. Yes, it is. Holy shit. Okay, so give me the give, give me the, the rundown of this. I, I know acquired it a few years ago. That's I, I found it. At a, yeah, but like, what, what's what the backstory of, of oh. the, the model? So yeah. in the early 40s, uh, the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, wanted a silent pistol for guard dogs and guards and just yeah. killing Nazis. Yeah. Um, so they reached out to High Standard. High Standard worked with Bell Laboratories, like Bell Telephone. Okay. And they developed this. It's an integrally suppressed 22. Uh, integrally suppressed 22, and that is almost as good. Tonally, they're very, very close, but depending on first or second round, that and that brand new Sicario perform almost exactly the same. Wow. Mm. So this is a standard Model G. They delivered, the, the story is that they delivered the forgings to high standard for this April 45 like the first week of April of 45. Oh. And then like a week later, Hitler killed himself and they're like, eh, contract's off. So these sat in a crate for a while <laughs> and High Standard eventually built them and sold them off. And it took them, the rumor was 10 years to sell off like a thousand of these. Oh or man, it was. wow. Because I mean, look at the size of that. Right. And it's an eight shot 380, it weighs like two and a half pounds. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want that? But it does retain the original features so you can just pop that back. So these were to be issued with a standard barrel. Wow. So you could just carry and use a 380 and then you put the suppressed barrel on it. That's wild. We've got some other stuff in the other room too. Cool. Oh no, have yeah, more stuff. This is his 14 pound AK-104. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is this thing, it's all tuned. So this thing just dribbles brass like a foot away. Right, bet, yeah. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. it Wolverine on it? Yeah. 
Yeah, the PBS one. Yeah, that's sexy. So this was one of my gunsmith school projects. This is one of my final projects, but it's a blueprinted Remington 700 with a Schneider USMC barrel, uh, accuracy and national chassis, Vortex Razor, uh, running a Surefire on there. This is my gun that I take out regularly to a thousand yards. Yeah. Um, it does it all day long. So Silencer History and Performance Volume 1. Okay. Right. They they had a four page article in there about a gun called AWC Centurion. They were made in the mid eighties by AWC to be a modern well rod. They made ten of them. This Holy is this is serial number ten. Holy smokes! That's I cool. think last I last I heard Kevin uh, Birmingham owns like serial one and like one of the other ones. Shit. So I know where it. three of them are. God, that is cool. But yeah. And that's chambered in what? Forty five. Wow, God, 45 ACP. There we go. Yeah, 45 ACP feeds off regular Holy unmodified shit. 1911 sticks. Whoa. Now that's God loves else. Americans. Yeah, that, that, that is, is it. something. Oh, and that is so light? Yeah. That's, like, this looked like it was going to be heavy. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a tank. It weighs nothing. Feel that thing. Like, oh, yeah. That is cool. Boy, that's got to just sound unreal. Oh, yeah. If you guys want to shoot it after, we can, we can shoot it. You guys ready? Yeah. Sure. Wow. In a small room. Oh, a super small room. Yeah. I mean, that's just nothing. Damn. Yeah, smoke machine. That's cool. Yeah, but that's two thirty. that was 230 grain lead ball. That's cool. America. Man, this is already off to a really good start. Yeah. Oh, shit. wow. This is... Tops the submachine gun. Oh, wow. Hang on, we're starting immediately behind the counter here. Oh, are and we, I see it. Are, are you gonna well, start is there Uzi off? back there? Yeah. Guys, I've got big news. Thrilling announcement, at least I think it's thrilling. We've got a new sponsor for the channel that would be Big Tech's Ordnance. Um, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time. We've actually been wanting to do some stuff with them for forever. Um, they carry a ton of different gear, only good gear, which is what we really care about. Um, we like nice shit around here as uh, illustrated on the hunt for Gucci guns. Um, and so this is very, very cool. They've got a buffet of gear. Imagine it's, it's like the, uh, like the Cheesecake Factory for tactical gear. Pretty much anything you can think of, they've got it, except nice versions of it. Um, same day shipping if you place the order before 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is a real time zone. The Texans are very proud of that time zone. Um, there's a code you guys can plug in. It is 1911SYN, as in 1911SYN. I don't think they're trying to imply that we're sinners or anything like that, but S 1911SYN will save you 10% off of the site. It comes with candy, it comes with a constitution. How can you not love that? Uh, and last but not least, um, our own little small business, 1911 Syndicate. Not only do we do content, but we're actually a real estate company um, from Pittsburgh today. Um, but hey, we work in a lot of different cities around the country. You can check the site for that. And then our Patreon's link below if you guys want to just like tipping your waiter, you know, when your steak's really good. Um, feel free to do that. Behind the scenes content, special merch, all kinds of stuff like that. Anyway, let's get back to shopping. This is badass. Total sleeper. Yeah, well, what I tell you, sleeper. Nick? Yeah, you... you... If, they have, if they have guns across the windows, it's either going to be awesome or not awesome. This, this is, is awesome. awesome. Well, I mean, hey, we're here for the highlights. AC556, AC that's, that's a vibe right there. That's a sweet a 100%. gun. Can, can we see that bad boy? Yeah, go grab it. Do you care? Is that cool? No. Hey, Jake, the AC556. That's actually, what we were trying to you, clone on mine. Well, you'll enjoy this information. That has got one of the few defensive machine gun uses by an HK employee. <laughs> no shit. No, no shit. And, wow. get, and he got off. I mean, he it was rightly used, but I mean... He smoked too, I, I believe. So He's, the selector, I think, is is in the back somewhere. Yeah, right by your it's, thumb. It's right by your thumb. This guy? Just okay, like so on that's the M14. Selector. So I believe he smoked two bikers. That's a that's a bat in government barrel. They had this, and then they had the AC 556K, which was the, the short. K is, no, is what we were cloning. cloning. Yeah. Yep. yep. K is what yep. we just cloned. They don't make them like they used to. That so. is cool. That's really, really cool. You know cool. what's crazy, too, is like all these tacti tactical dudes, oh, the Mini 14 ain't blah, blah, blah. Mini 14 is awesome. I'm excited. I literally haven't put a round through my... Cole SP1? Man. That oh, yeah. Stuff. 93. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's a that's a bad, that, bad that's joker a, right that's there. That's a bad gun right there, man. With the mount, that's super sick. Look at that claw mount. 
Come yeah. on, man. All right. It's amazing. It, when we do these, we find a lot of Uzis. Yeah. Well, they're sort of transferable or no? It's just a semi auto. That don't matter. It's still cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's on my list. It's on my list. You win me over on that. I, this is something I've been looking for. Let me tell you, you can you can build like modern clones of these guns. Nothing hits like an OG. Yeah, the OG, the original. Yeah, yeah this is off God, to a really awesome good store. store. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. See well, look at stuff. this. I mean, yeah. Astra, high power, 1903, 1911. Oh, wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah. 1911s, Springfield Armory. That's a very rare, very rare 1911. Because these guns were built by not Springfield Armory, you know today, but the actual National Springfield Armory. 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 Yeah. This gun right here was used to supplement 1911 production during World War One. That's a sick gun. Mm. Mauser pocket pistol right there. That's pretty sweet. Second to the back. Oh that's yeah. A Thirty or a twenty-five. Actually, they make it. They made it in a thirty-two as well. Nineteen oh three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There oh. You go. oh yeah. It opens. Do you mind? Oh. oh. That, this right here. Oh my gosh. Well, this so, is good because the the last place he was all bred is here. Like I said, the yeah, Springfield yeah, yeah. Armory, uh, you know, had to supplement production for Colt during World War One. So these are really, really rare guns. And again, not Springfield Armory, you know, today Springfield Armory, the National Armory. This is an early, early 1911. So this is probably, I would say. <laughs> pre-19, this is probably a 1914 or 1915. So the spur hammer was actually enlarged later on. This also has a lanyard loop magazine, which they went away with, they went away from that fairly early. That's incredible. That, that's, a, this is a Mauser pocket pistol, 25 auto. You can still see the niter blue is still on it. Uh -huh. uh, that's, that is, and look again, European 635 instead of 25 ACP as it properly should be. Maybe if uh, they knew how to use the correct caliber, um, they would not lose so many world wars. Mm, wasn't too Big 29-2, yeah. pinned and recess. that's a cool gun. Uh, fun fact, so, uh, you know, this is the Grab longer it. barrel. Bring it up. Okay, so the longer barreled guns, you know, the, the Dirty Harry gun was a uh, six, six and a half inch gun, something like that. But for a lot of the advertisement, and that is a freaking nice gun, actually. So pinned and recessed, that's a really important feature. Uh, a lot of Smith & Wesson collectors, they won't do a non-pinned and recessed gun. They just began to simplify the manufacturing. The next step was uh, obviously the introduction of like mem and cast parts. Mm -hmm. So like the, you know, the guns just became cheaper over time. Uh, you can also tell by the blue, this is an early gun. But uh, these guns, the, the longer barrel, like this is an eight inch, they used longer barreled guns in the advertisements for Dirty Harry. So it looked like a bigger More intimidating, gun. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're doing like pointing it straight at the camera. Yeah, oh, it it's looks dramatic. Like yeah. a bigger gun, yeah. You know, so I mean, like that right there looks really big. But this is actually really, really good. Like this is like a, a gun that I would not feel bad shooting. Model 12 Winchester right here. That's a good field field gun. Also designed by our boy Browning. A lot of these early guns had the, uh, you know disconnect so you could slam fire yeah this is a cool shop a new this, single action army is worth like you know like what do you mean like new, I, 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 like I mean, a new coal or like a yeah yeah new like a new coal oh well but good luck getting one. Oh really oh, yeah i, I mean, didn't know they, they're like on like, like a two that. or three month back oh, well, oh we got some good looking 1911s over here first of all hold on hold on Oh, old bullseye gun. Uh, built on a Remington Rand. Now, here's an interesting fact for you. What Remi is this? I don't know what this is. So, Remington Rand built a pretty good 1911. They got an award for that. I mean, they made great guns, and they actually were the least expensive manufacturer during World War II. But because they were extremely consistent, which, by the way, they weren't the whole time. They actually had problems with interchangeable parts early on. They shut down production, put in new management. Bullseye and uh, National Match Shooters wanted to use them to build on post-war. Mm -hmm. So that right there is an early hardball uh, post-war gun. Now, feel that frame to slide fit. Just feel, and keep in mind, you're you're working with an old gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad. No, not at all. You know, they fit new barrels. I felt worse brand new guns. Yeah, that's a sick gun. You're a, uh, he knows his old guns. Oh, yes. He knows yes, his old guns. Okay, 1911 Whisperer, what else is over here? There's a, a more, I mean, this is a Colt Combat Commander. This looks to be a pretty early one too. The Combat Commander um, 
you know, was the steel frame commander. The guns didn't come out in steel frame. Yeah. The first guns were a lightweight frame when they came out in 49 and 50. And actually, they first came out in 9mm. That's going to have a punch. Yeah, it is. I don't think I've ever seen something like this. This is a... Um, well, I don't. I actually don't know yeah, what this is. It's a 1911 yeah. Champion, but I've never seen the mil spec. Um, you know, never seen this in like a mil spec configuration. That's actually a pretty cool gun. That'd make a good base gun too. Yeah, no, to build great. on, even though it's a Brazilian frame. Um, the new Smith and Wesson Classic series. Oh, what is that? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I got. That right there is a. Uh, this is a really, really badass gun. Really badass gun. So this is exactly what I have. This is a Lou Horton edition 29-3. That's a three inch barrel 44. This is what I shot that revolver class with. Dear Lord. That is a sweet gun. And it has the original Lou Horton grips. A lot of people will change those out. Um, but that's like how, how far back is this going? Probably, the, uh, I think 84, 85. Oh man, little Cole officers. That's a, that's a cool gun too, man. Man, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> A little yeah. bit of a pre-war officer's model. Who knew? Pittsburgh. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. I forgot Pittsburgh was a town. That's a good-looking pre-war officer's model. Officer's Colt. And look at that old-school pre-war. I mean, just, dude, they just did things different back then. Mm -hmm. You know? Man, this, is, this has got some good stuff over yeah, it. That's a whole nother deal over here. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just glad that we're we're two for two on 18, on 18 mini, 14. mini 14s. Yeah, this is, I, it's, I'm taking it as a sign because we're going to go to, we're going to three one. shops. If there's a, if this is at a yeah, third shop. One. USB yeah, expert, you, no, this is more my wheelhouse, yeah. right? They talk about all the old stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. Anyone for a USB expert? That's Neo Vintage because that's about 20 years old-ish. Oh, oh damn it. it. So I just got a USP um, 45 um, expert because I couldn't find a USP, just a standard USP in 45. And here it is. This is the gun that got me truly into guns. I've kind of you, got you, you might say you got I've wood. Got a Woody. Yeah, <laughs> you took it. From I'm you. sorry, man. You stole it. From I couldn't you. help it. What about a gold cup? That's a new gold cup. So oh, is it? Is so it really? interestingly, they got a three hill oh, trigger. Fooled me. Yeah. Three hole triggers are new. The original gold cups had this kind of scalloped Scalary. out trigger, and they're actually their triggers are actually wider than a normal 1911 trigger. Mm. One of the best trigger pad feels you'll ever see or ever have on a 1911 is an old national match gun. Yeah, and that's the fun of this series is you really don't know. You take your best guess of about three shops in the area that you think are going to be good, but you don't know. You just show up and you're like, I don't know, man. This might be a total bust, and that's happening. Oh happened. yeah. Smith Corona 1903 A3. Hell yeah, brother. 1903 is the best Mauser action ever because guess what? Americans made it. I found, <laughs> is that a Carcano? Yeah, it's a Carcano. Oh, and I'm... oh watch out, JFK. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Sir, could you show me that thug gun? Oh, the I gray can one absolutely. On the wall oh, there? You want the, the ghetto blaster? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm uh, interested. You want the 500 or the, or the 900? The 9. Okay, yeah, okay. Because that actually looks kind of properly original. <laughs> That's you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Okay. And listen, son, I'll uh, I'll make it's sure we write M11. up. We'll write up two invoices for you, so your wife don't know. It's pre-owned. <laughs> that is the heaviest. It's proper bolt. Proper in the world. Proper. Holy shit! The threading oh, uh, on the barrel. This is you, buddy. Uh, this is you. Okay. Don't even don't even deny it. I might have to talk to someone. Let's let's get this. I don't know. You've been talking about getting it, a mini this well, whole trip. We fly out of it's, Chicago. I don't know if I can put that in my just luggage. Just ship it. Yeah, yeah. Just ship it. Yeah. Ship, ship it. No, just ship it to his, himself. They'll ship it here. You can just Why ship it to his you house. Fly out. Put it in the gun case. I don't have a gun case. Buy one. Is this a horrible plan? No. I think this is a great plan. I and, and you know what? It, be a good deal. And bonus, bonus content is if you get arrested at Chicago. Oh yeah, that's crispy true. can be there filming. That's way better. Filming. Yeah, that's so it doesn't really that's matter. That's actually a win. Yeah, dude, that's you, buddy. That's you. That's I mean, this you is literally are. like exactly what I've been looking that's for. That's perfect. Ghost, Ghost it. it with me. Ghost it with me. It's on safe, so it probably is pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> 
not much. It could be worse. Not, I, I, I think it's it. It could be worse. I think we do it. Mm -hmm. so Would you, you want something. me to get the paperwork started, son? You want me to make a, you know, make this yours? Is this serendipity? This was made in Ducktown. <laughs> See? You have to. Now you have to out of, oh out of principle God. for me. Out of respect. I'm just going to talk to him. Yeah, well, now yeah, we got to get... We gotta get the haggling. Buy, yeah, what what are you doing? Just buy the gun. I'm not saying anything's gonna happen, but I'm just saying it's worth worth the conversation. You know, I'm just poking around, you know. Just, when do we we just got this one in, mm -hmm. didn't we? Yeah. I'm just a guy that likes thug shit. You know anything on it? <laughs> I can't remember. Again? Yeah, no, when I came in. Brother, I, you know what I'm gonna hit you with? You know what I'm gonna hit you with? I'm gonna hit you with a no ball. The ball is in your court now, oh, son. Huh? Yeah, just to trade in from a guy. Dropped it off in the shop like a week ago. Yeah. So that thing's clean too. Most of cool it's actually barrel. pretty clean and it's got the threaded barrel, so you get that yeah. little shitty suppressor they make for this thing. Yep. Yeah. And don't worry, you can you can uh, send me the commission. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I found another one for you guys. Oh gosh. What do you got? Here. It's a one of five. Oh great. Oh. Oh gosh, I already seen the C O L T on there. And it's a cold. And it's engraved. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. A tactical masterpiece. It's I like a USPSA gun they gave out for prizes. That's, that's pretty wild. pretty, yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. Well, I forgot we got that one in the back, so. <laughs> well, so much stuff. forgotten. We got a lot of stuff, man. Hey, no problem. Is there a case that I could Are you sure buy I could to find fly something for this? you? So I can lock, because I don't have TSA locks or anything. Well, we can get those. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's places called Walmart. These yeah, are attainable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to go to there's the special features. Listen, miles. you can't talk yourself out of this, son. You have to make it happen. I, mean, I, don't I already need, know balls. I don't you. Need I already know balls. You. So if you don't do it, then everyone knows. You, you have, have no, no balls. balls. I mean, the video will perform nine hundred dollars better if you buy it. So you're saying I would actually break even on this video? <laughs> Technically, it you wouldn't actually. Money. It wouldn't actually cost me anything. All right, write it up. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy, buy your Mac Eleven. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Guys, you know what you need in your life? You need a belt, because you can't be a man if you ain't got no belt on to hold up your pants. So uh, I rock the Segura gear belts. This is the Emissary Light Inner Velcro. You can throw a battle wagon over top of this. So if you just want to rock this for EDC, great. It's actually fantastic for a range belt, as long as you don't need something super rigid. I actually, to be honest, most of the time, I actually still rock this at the range, unless I'm going heavy gear. Um, battle wagon. Great if you want to go full decked out. Emissary uh, is great for just kind of like more rigid if you want that all-purpose belt um, for whether for EDC range, whatever that may be. Bunch of cool stuff for your vehicles, um, stuff for mag pouches. They really got a lot of great stuff, mag carriers, th things like that. So um, check that out. The code is 1911 syndicate, no spaces. That'll save you 10%. Appreciate the support. Let's do it. Well, let's start in the R for the course. Bunch of SIGs. obligatory SIG. I will say, at least there's a P210 there, and their displays are always really nice. Yeah, um, well, I mean, they they're definitely uh, they do a great job on that. They're getting a lot of that government money. So well, you see, SIG yes, they are. is a uh, marketing company that sells guns. Yes, you see them. Oh, damn! So that's the new contract gun. My buddy Kevin just got one of those. Um, he said it's actually super good. Um, yeah, they're not making many of those. Those are limited edition. I don't, I don't remember the full backstory, but that cage to keep this pressure. It's beefy. It's kind of Spear LT-ish, but like amped up. Actually kind of cool. I didn't expect to see one of those. More sick. I mean, this is all very new, predictable stuff. Spear LTs, like we're almost getting desensitized to this on the series because it's just like, yeah, we know we're going to see a bunch of cool sick stuff. It's great. It's just like, eh, you know, yeah, but of course, but of course we're going to see that. Bunch of staccatos. Bunch of staccatos, yeah. It's almost hard to uh, label staccato as Gucci, uh, given some of the other things. I mean, here's the thing: we've seen three shops with three deagles, so you might yeah. that might be a sign that uh, you might be uh -huh. going two purchases deep. Yeah. Hey, this is a cool gun it's over an expensive here, day. which is going to be funny considering where I work. Uh, this is yeah. actually the Wilson Combat 45th anniversary gun. That's a cool gun. Uh, they have the 20 LPI top serrations, the uh, Bomar, but I believe that's a Ken sight, not a real Bomar. Obviously, they're not still they're not production, but blued gun actually, which you don't see from Wilson Combat very often. I'm still kind of drawn to the new Cheetah. I actually think it's kind of cool. No, the the new Cheetah looks. 
I think it, it, looks, feels, it awesome. looks awesome. It feels really cool. And you know, 380, it ain't bad. Here's a gun you don't see very often. We were gonna do a review one and it just kind of like fell by the wayside and just never really turned into a thing. But I do think they're cool though. All right, what's a gun you don't see very often? Eli's got a catch over here. Um, this second from top. Oh yeah. It is a uh, Springfield MC operator. Uh, so these are meant to be kind of the commercial versions of the Springfield Marine Corps operator pistols. I'm just gonna highlight there's a Mark 23 over here. Oh, he, oh yeah, yeah, we know. Every time there's Jake a Mark 23. Jake is contractually oh. obligated to uh, highlight the Mark 23. Yeah. You, you know. know what, I've seen too many of them today. They're kind of not as cool. Like I used to think they were kind of like you had to know somebody to get one, and now it's just like it's Turns just- Turns out you can I go to any gun is. store in Pennsylvania and you can get a Mark 23. Is, is, it's just the size that deters people. They're, they're, that's all it is. They're like, I know it might be cool, but if I'm gonna spend 2,500 bucks, do I want like the novelty thing or do I want something I'm actually gonna use? It's like, yeah. You'd have been one of those guys in the 30s, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, well, that, with, with these genetics with all, I don't know. Yeah. All, that, all that German stuff you like. <laughs> uh, look at that, a full rail. Oh, Hell yeah. Wait a minute. That's a great price on a full rail too. That's a cool gun. That is a cool gun. That's a cool I gun like that right there. Yeah, that's a badass pistol. I don't see a lot of those in shops. Uh, they only make them once a year. Oh, oh no shit. Sure. They only make, they do like a run of them. That's pretty cool. I, I, I love my full rail TRP. Okay, so in the back, um, I don't know, any like older stuff or like neo vintage, like, um, or whatever you would deem to be fun. Any, anything unique or kind of wild, a little bit out there? Not currently for sale. Would it, even if it's not for sale. Oh, shit! Somehow, our friend behind the counter forgot about a members-only lounge. This is where things get good. The lounge features dozens of guns from World War II, the time we kicked Germany's ass. God bless America. Let's check it out. That's like we meant the old Gucci stuff, not yeah. the new oh, stuff. Oh, this is a nice little lounge. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. yeah, this is... Oh, oh shit! <laughs> oh, you've been holding out on us. You... Okay, all right. I, I told you, I totally spaced it, you know? Yeah. SVT 40, Johnson, trench gun. That's a Stevens. That's rare as piss. Grand. It's a Nambu. 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 photo in the grip. Holy oh, shit. Uh, a take yeah, down you, there, you, you, you did us dirty. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Original <laughs> trench knife? Oh my, boys, do not look below my belt. <laughs> okay, it, it will be a tent. Remington Rand, Remington Rand, Colt, Remington Rand, all World War II vintage. A correct, a correct in one carbine, because you can tell per the rear sight there for this World War II, rear sight, uh, no bayonet lug, and the push button, the push button safety you see there. So. You'll see it in a second, but that's a Liberator. So we built these little 45 single shot pistols and dropped them into France. French resistance would get them, pop a Nazi in the back of the head and take their gear. So that is really cool. The grip actually holds spare 45 rounds. They don't feed, it's a single shot pistol. Um, but it is a 45 caliber uh, gun called the Liberator that you basically use to get German wow. gear. Um, above it, two really cool guns paratrooper carbines now the bottom one looks like it's been refurbished because it does have the you see the safety switch how it yeah. swings and yeah, then yeah. The, the rear sight and then the bayonet lug but the top one with that flip up um uh -huh. the flip up uh, sight in the rear and no uh bayonet lug yeah that's pretty close to like what they would have jumped out of uh jumped out of planes with into normandy oh, prior to d-day yeah a lot of them didn't like those guns because the stock doesn't lock really well. So yeah, when yeah, you have yeah. it shouldered, it, it moves. Wonky. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was made for, uh, you know, purpose. And then we go to the other side. We're, now we go, we go to the other side of the uh, the, the conflict. And ich bin reich und spiele hier in der Kommensi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some there there are some Lugers here that are uh, Lugers, these yeah. these are not Kaiser Lugers. These, these are, are definitely Ger uh, yeah Nazis. Yeah, na I mean, um, we're so, talking nineteen thirty nine. Compare forty three. Nineteen thirty nine. Up top, K ninety eight K uh, or K ninety eight sniper rifle. Uh, that's cool. That is some really cool stuff here. We had a bunch of knives and bayonets um, that all had the dirty birds on them and stuff like that, and it hurt some people's feelings, so the owner took them home. 
Yeah, it, you know, we, we've run into this on, on other episodes of this, and, I, and I'm just like, look, man, you can, you can acknowledge history without it being some sort of endorsement or Absolutely. saying it's okay. It's just like, to say it's not historically interesting and fascinating, it's like, you're crazy. Yeah. It's like, this doesn't hurt my feelings. There's a PPK, the gun that ended uh, the war in Europe. <laughs> Self-inflicted end. Self-inflicted end. <laughs> oh man, that's really cool stuff. Some good looking Lugers, some P-38s, actually some high powers. Uh, German, um, the Germans actually did take over Belgium and thus the FN factory. So they did have uh, high powers. Uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, this is, this is the stuff. This is the, this is the good stuff here. Hmm. All in this back lounge. Wow, I'd be a member just to look at it. Yeah, this is very cool. Yeah. This is the VIP memberships. I like oh, this. the VIP memberships. This is That's where we. This is where we like to hang out here. Yeah.